Brothers in Christ, part two. Tom Brady is still sitting there double-cheeked up on Labor Day Monday with a square of .5 passing yards. If Tom Brady throws one single passing yard, you win on prize picks. A lot of you guys are like, do they know something we don't know? They just want you to get on the platform and have some fun. We're trying to have some fun in this economy. And the way you do that is by going to prizepicks.com or just downloading the app. The link is in the description and go to NFL. Okay. For week one, they have Tom Brady sitting at 0.5 passing yards. It's an auto dub for you. If he retires, it doesn't count. You don't lose your money. All right. But here's how you double your money. If you download the prize picks app and you're depositing for the first time, BDGE will get you a 100% deposit match. Promo code BDGE will get you a 100% deposit match on anything deposited from $10 up to $100, all right? And go double your money with that Brady .5 free square more. We're going more, believe it or not. We're not going to take less than .5 passing yards on it. It's beautiful. It's ripe. It's set up for you. And you know what we have set up right now in the other room? The E-Town Get Down live draft. We're not going live for it on YouTube, but a lot of y'all ask, when does it happen? Monday, Labor Day Monday, every year, y'all. It's the same thing. It's the same cycle. It's the same routine. Every Monday, the vlog for the draft day party will be up later this week, probably Thursday before kickoff, hopefully. All right, so we got our big money draft. Here's the thing. I've done three drafts so far. I've done three big money drafts. We've had our the Bash draft. We have had, uh, and then I did two Yahoo Pro Leagues, which are uh, $250 buy-in leagues. And I've started to notice some things. As you draft, right, I say a lot of things throughout the summer. There's a lot of news and analysis and player stuff to kind of follow along as we're going through the uh, the dog days of summer. But once you're in the draft, that's where money speaks. That's where the money talks. That's where your brain actually connects with your heart and tells you what you really like, which players you really should be drafting. So you get an idea of where your heart goes, okay? And I've noticed a few change of directions in the way my actions have mapped to my draft. So today, we are here to talk about, I don't know, eight to 10 players in whom I've had a change of heart for over the last few weeks of the summer. You got to understand, I put out so much content that the storylines change and the narratives of how I view these players changes on a constant basis, which is why you need to subscribe to this damn Chanel. Because we're talking about players every single day and, and different news affects the way we look at these players. All right. So today, y'all know what we got to do. We got to tuck our shirts in first. Flex up. Let's hit the intro. All right, maybe some of these revolve around more like team vibes, right? We're, we're talking about vibes of the teams and the players in terms of change of heart and, and reason. Some of them I have reasons for. Some of them I just don't. I just want to get it down on paper. The first team, though, are the Buccaneers and Tom Brady. And uh, I actually put a bet down for the Bucs to finish third in the division. Obviously, the odds are very long. Chance of that happening are low, which is why you, you put money down on that. I think the Saints have a chance. I think the Panthers have a low-key chance to be kind of good. But the Buccaneers on offense obviously lost a lot of pieces. Brown's gone. Gronk's gone. Rojo, the GOAT, is gone. But they've suffered so many setbacks on their offensive line, tons of injuries to the offensive line, to the starters. The whole the whole interior is different than when they won the Super Bowl. Brady's missed so much time this summer. Obviously, that might not actually matter. But just being away from the team when there's new parts on the offensive line feels weird. So I don't know. The vibes are just a little bit off in Tampa Bay. So Brady, when I'm down at that like QB 7, 8, 9 range, Brady's not the guy I'm pulling the draft button on. Like I'd rather probably have the dudes just in front of him, like Russell Wilson or wait for like a Kirk Cousins or someone in that range there. So Brady... I don't find on my teams often. I still like Mike Evans where he is. I think I originally had him probably as like a mid second round pick where I'm probably pulling the trigger a little bit later on him now because of a few things like Godwin's recovery has gone really, really smoothly. Of course, he actually practiced today, I believe, for the first time without a knee brace in full. So he's on a, a very clear path to get back onto the field pretty early. I don't know if he'll be there for week one. I don't know if he'll be 100% until like week six or seven, but the recovery is clear that it's going down the right path. They obviously brought in Julio Jones and Russell Gage. None of those guys are up to the standard of an Antonio Brown or Godwin at full health, but they will start to mix and match how the production of the games kind of flow within each other. So I think there's still a very high chance that Evans leads the league in touchdowns this year because they're going to live in the red zone and he's the guy down there. But the in between the 20s, the target volume, I was expecting like 12 to 15 targets a game with all these injuries and players leaving might not really be there anymore. So the vibe check in Tampa Bay, and this might sound like an ignorant ass statement at the end of the year, but the vibe checks ain't vibey. 
Now, one thing that I have really, really changed my tune on in these drafts recently is getting an elite tight end. Okay, so I've done three money drafts, and in those three money drafts, I have walked away with Mark Andrews in two of them and Travis Kelsey in one of them. Once we get, once I get to that beginning of the third round, uh, my picks were I had the, the the fourth pick and the third pick in the other two. So I've had the 104 and the 103. So that means I always have like an early third round pick. Basically, when I get there, there's no value left at running back for the most part. You're you're grabbing a guy that's either early or a guy that you didn't really like that much, or you're grabbing a wide receiver that's kind of in that like middle tier round. So I end up pulling the trigger on a high end tight end. Um, so the majority of my team has been b- built off the tight end. So I've changed my tune on a guy like Mark Andrews. I love Mark Andrews. He's the guy I drafted twice in those three leagues. I will be targeting him tonight in the E Town Get Down draft. So I hope no one in that league watches my video. Um, that is also a tight end premium league. So I really want a high end tight end. Andrews is a guy that I think he's coming off an absolutely spectacular year. And the reason I didn't love him in the beginning of the summer, not that I didn't want to draft him, but I wasn't going out of my way to take him at the end of the second, early third round was because I thought they were going to come back to being, you know, the, the Ravens of old, where when Lamar Jackson started the first two years, they were one, the run heaviest team in the NFL wasn't close Two, the slowest team in the NFL in terms of pace. Those things end up being they end up coinciding. They don't run a lot of plays. Their defense is also good. So it's like that really can't happen because Gus Edwards is out. Um, yes, they signed Kenyon Drake, and Mike Davis, but they're not like difference makers on the offense. J- J.K. Dobbins is coming back very slowly from his ACL tear. So I think they're going to have to go pass heavy again. So I've been really changing my tune on Mark Andrews. I've really changed my tune on even dra- drafting Ka- uh, Travis Kelsey. Probably not at cost. I'll never draft a first round tight end, but I want a tight end to anchor my team for the most part. And then uh, if I don't get on those guys, like Dallas Goddard is a guy that over the last few weeks I've just fell- fallen in love with. Hurts, everything out of uh, Philly's camp has been that Hurts has in- improved dramatically in terms of accuracy, pocket presence. And I think Goddard's going to be like their main red zone target. Devontae Smith is a good outside separator down the field. AJ Brown, same thing. He's also a good line of scrimmage guy because he can make guys miss after the catch. But I think over the middle of the field and in the red zone, it's going to be a lot of Mr. God. And I think like Goddard easily jumps Hawkinson for me. I was never high on Hawkinson, but I look at this Detroit passing offense. I have had a very big change of heart on Ross St. Brown. He was a guy that I didn't love because you look at the splits of when he exploded last year. A lot of them came without Swift. A lot of them came without Hawkinson. I, I don't know. The vibes out of Detroit in terms of Amon Ra's year is someone I'm targeting him in like every draft I have. I drafted him in the two drafts that were not the bash. I missed out on him in the bash because I took, or Amon Ra went one pick before me. So I had to go for Bateman and I love Bateman, but I already had Andrews on the team and I didn't have Lamar Jackson. So I didn't want to double dip on the Baltimore passing offense. Um, I would have gladly taken Amon Ra where he went, but he was one pick before me. So I got <laughs> sniped though. And uh, I love Amon Ra. If you can get him as your wide receiver three or your flex or whatever, he is someone that I'm very much all in on. He seems to be the clear favorite target of Jared Goff right now. So big change of heart on AMRS TBVD. I feel like I've pretty much stayed in sync with how I felt about most of the running backs up to this point. I've just avoided entirely like the dead zone in the middle round of running backs. So we'll just kind of move over to wide receivers. I'm a little bit higher on Tyreek Hill than I was early on. Obviously, the preseason game that they just had makes you feel some type of way. They connected. Tyreek Hill is just kind of an amazing player. And I still feel like I might be, I'm probably going to be right on this. Even on the deep ball that they connect on to it, like really, really badly underthrew him. And that's going to be a problem in the real NFL games. But my thing was like, Tyreek Hill is pretty much a shoe in to have 1,100, 1,200 receiving yards, regardless of who his quarterback is. The reason he was so deadly with Mahomes is because Mahomes is so good throwing the ball downfield. So while five to seven of his targets came downfield, you know, 50% of them were accurate. Whereas with Tua, we might get 20% of them being accurate or some shit like that. So it's like, that's where the the ceiling comes into play. And that's why I wasn't really high on Tyree Kill to begin the season. He was like an auto fade for me at the back end of the second round. And I still don't really feel comfortable taking him in the second round, but if he drops me in the third, he's no longer really a fade fade for me. Still fading Waddle because he was always like a volume play. It seemed like last year, not really efficient, but really high volume. And you add Tyree Kill and there's nowhere to go up in volume for a guy like Jalen Waddle. And then A.J. Brown is another guy that I'm not completely fading anymore. A.J. Brown is a dude that also all the hype has just been crazy from him out of camp. And if I do believe that Jalen Hurts takes a step up, it's going to benefit everybody in this offense. So I even got a couple shares of Devontae Smith in my uh, and Devonta Smith in my drafts, which was kind of surprising to me. It was late. It was like 10th or 11th round. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good grabbing him. But if uh, if Hertz really takes a step up, which is in the range of outcomes in the beginning of the summer, I looked at it as a very low chance in the range of outcomes. But now the, the drumbeat is steady there that he looks way better. So if he does, you know, if that increases from a 5% chance of him taking a step up as a really good passer up to 25%, then the range of outcomes for all these wide receivers also dramatically increases. So Brown's a guy that I'm okay taking in the third round, early fourth round, if he's still going there ADP. Or the second round, I'm, I'm 
off on him, but I have moved him away from like complete fade to someone I'm okay drafting at value. Uh, Elijah Moore is a dude that I've also like fallen in love with. He's kind of in that tier. I've I found so many of my teams have gone like wide receiver, wide receiver, or I've gotten two wide receivers early that I feel really comfortable with as a one and two. And then once it hits like rounds five, six, seven, I've had some com combination of Bateman, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Elijah Moore. Those are like the three guys that I'm really, really, really high on that I really, really love the idea of having as your wide receiver three slash flex. So Elijah Moore is a guy that I continue to move up my rankings. Love Bateman. And then Kadarius Tony is a guy that I've moved down significantly. He was a guy that I've like a fucking chirped about all offseason, right? All the way from like draft day through June, July. And then we've kind of had nothing but red flags. He's missed so much practice time. He has not played in any preseason games. I don't know what's going to happen with Tony. He might step on the field week one and and explode, and then I'm going to look like an idiot again. But you want to talk about red flags. Like he had a bunch of red flags going into the summer, and then he did not really disprove a single one of them. So where there is smoke, there is fire, and I would kind of be ignorant. He's moved down draft boards. A lot of people have kind of cooled off of him as well because the reports have been wildly negative. I have been on that bandwagon. Uh, I still love him in Dynasty, and I'm holding on to him because I want to see what kind of player he can become. But for this year, I'm a little bit nervous. He's just dealt with so many injuries, and they've kind of continued throughout the summer. And uh, yeah, it hasn't hasn't been good for Mr. Tony. Uh, so yeah, those are eight to 10 guys that um, I have had somewhat of a change of heart on and very, very recently. So if you have your draft tonight or throughout the rest of the week, hopefully this helps you a bit. Our season long draft guide, which will have more info on all of these players that we talked about is available. And the best part about it is you get it for free if you go download prize picks and deposit with our promo code BDGE. So not only can you hit that Brady free square, 0.5, more than 0.5 passing yards on prize picks, and they're going to 100% match your deposit, but you will get emailed our season-long draft guide with our rankings for your draft absolutely free by depositing on prize picks. All right, want to get this out for y'all quick. The E-Town Get Down Draft Vlog again will be live Thursday or Friday. We'll try to get it out before the season, but it's a lot of footage, and Ike is breaking his fucking bike to get it out. I love y'all, and I shall see you on tomorrow. <laughs> Get wild. Get wild.